I think you do not require my introduction. Uh, she has already given you. Only thing I would like to tell you is, uh, though an engineer, but I am not all that expert to what you people are. You guys are actually working on it, uh, going through a lot of books, a lot of informations, reading through it, what is going around in the world. Okay, but what we, what I have seen and what we are going to talk about is an Indian scenario. The don't let the well dry to learn the worth of water. It's, uh, it's a very apt saying. The we Indians, we always do that. We wait for the last minute for the crisis. We create crisis rather, and then we try to manage it. And you know why? Why are we sitting here? What are you doing with this kind of a professional degree or professional knowledge which you are acquiring or going to acquire? Why this topic is so important to us as of now? So, we will dwell on that, we will discuss, discuss on this, all these uh, points. We just on the water management systems, what we are going to talk about is basically all of you are aware of it, the water, the fresh water, the waste water or any form of water, you know how do we manage it, how do we use it, how do we misuse it. What is good for us, particularly in today's scenario with new government coming in and Narendra Modi is saying that we are going to have a Swachh Bharat mission which was started off in 1947-48 by none other than the father of the nation. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, we are still struggling with it, what is Swachh Bharat? Okay. So, water is very important for us, but why are we talking about water? What is so much about water that we are talking about water? Why not anything else? I will just take you off the subject a little bit. Your universe is made up of basic five elements. And which are those five elements? We will have interactive rather than you know, no, I am just talking, talking, talking. It's, and anybody is welcome to intervene in between, interject anything or say something, whatever you want. Yeah, somebody was saying something. Those basic five elements fire and land. Air, water, water sky, sky, fire, fire and, land. and land. Okay, you call it land or you call it earth? Okay, yeah. And what is so important about water among all these five? Look at your body. What is the percentage of water in your body? 70%. 70 percent. And if there is no water, then what happens? So no human beings, no universe, no earth. So only soul will roam around somewhere, possibly in Mars. Okay. So, water is very important for this universe and particularly for earth and so there it is important for us. So, we need to look at what are the sources of water, how we can best use water, how we can best save it for generations. There is something it just comes to my mind I, as not part of this. I am sure all of you are all technical people, read through a lot of magazines, newspapers, science. The global warming, I am sure everybody heard about it. What is the effect of global warming as of now, today? On? Melting of glaciers, sea level rise. Temperature. Okay, it is all this is happening because of rise in temperature. And how it has been increasing from year 1000 AD till 
till about 1800. The rise in temperature was to the tune of about 0.2 degrees, right? In last 100 years, the rise in temperature is 0.6 degrees. And the way this world and we are becoming tech savvy by next about 30 to 40 years, there is going to be rise in temperature by 2.5 degrees. That means almost around one fourth of your glacier will be gone in next 50 years. And then what happens? Now we are talking about scarcity of water, you will have water everywhere. Now that water you will have everywhere, can you drink that water? Anybody who's had a little bit of experience on drinking water treatment? No? Okay. So one is that water which we are treating in our homes, the municipalities are treating and giving it to us. In Delhi, it is the Delhi Jal Board. Okay. And in coastal areas, the sea water is being treated, particularly when you go to the Gulf countries and all. And then that water is being used for drinking purpose. How much is the cost difference? How much? Huh? It's a huge very costly. Very costly. Approximately how much? Millions. <laughs> okay. As compared to your normal treatment, what we are doing here, keeping everything, every cost together, your desalination works out to be almost four times costlier. So one side, if you try and appreciate that with global warming, there is going to be water everywhere. But then what do you require? You will have water everywhere, but you will, have, will not have water to drink. Because then people will start realizing to reduce that global warming, we should reduce the industries. We should reduce the technology. And once you start reducing that, then you will not have that kind of resource to treat that water. So the best way is that whatever water is available to us in any form, whether it is a natural source, whether it is rain water, whether it is waste water, we need to save it and use it. Now we'll just dwell upon some water stress. Then there are a lot of technologies you have. I am sure, actually what we are talking about right now is what we have, I was discussing with uh, Ranjana was that basically I think some of the subjects out here are the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban, which is going to be the topic for you all, I believe some, some of you may be working on this particular subject. And why we are looking at the, there are, there are see, centralized systems or decentralized systems. What is the difference? How best we can save that resource of water by using various technologies and in what form? Whether it is uh, centralized, that means the bigger plants or the decentralized, the smaller plants and smaller colonies or villages or juggi jhopdis or whatever it is. Okay? And then what can be the best way forward and what do we understand by Swaksh Bharat do we have the sufficient information and are we working? The, some of the some of you may be having this kind of your, uh, like I am told the PhD students are here, uh, the topic on this Swaksh Bharat particularly. And I must give you one small example on how, how critical it, it is for you all and how important you all are part of this particular mission. You are qualified people. And I must tell you that, that my observation is, as far as the treating water is concerned, there is a degree available in various institutes. 
There are chemical engineers who are working, there are environmental engineers like you all, they are working on this particular field and all, but that at the top level. But you all can't operate the plants at ground level, you need people to operate that plant. You have lot of ITIs, diplomas, schools and other colleges, institutes working on something, but there is no institute in this country which gives training at the lower level, supervisory staff or at the operator level. And that is where your importance comes into play that you have to be very, very thorough in your profession that wherever you go, that you are in a position to give or impart some kind of a training to these people. And little bit then we will talk about Swaksh Bharat mission. This is your scenario. From uh, this is all on the records and various websites, magazines, there are number of magazines are published. Now, where are you? You are heading towards disaster now. Anybody who belongs to Gurugam? No. Anybody who belongs to Noida, Greater Noida? Which place? Sector 120. Huh? Sector 120 is your Greater Noida, Greater Noida, in between. No, it's in Noida. It's in Noida. No, Noida hai, <laughs> it's, I think Greater Noida is closer to it. Yeah. Huh? Okay. I can only tell you that for last about 25 years since we have been staying in Delhi, uh, DLF was, you know, having this project in Gurgaon, DLF phase 4. I have seen that whole project coming up. When they were trying to go into the basement, because it is a 22 story building. So, some of you may be able to understand then how much of a 22 story building, then what is the size of the foundation, depth. So, they barely went into around just about 20 feet and they started getting water and I am talking about 1995-96 and what is the state of water in Gurugaon? No water, so around 200 meters you will not have water and government notification has already been issued that even for the construction purpose for making a building, you will not use fresh water. You can only use recycled water from STPs. Okay? A number of builders and big, big builders in fact, they have closed down because of this problem. Same problem in Greater Noida, it's around 7 years back, the state of water was the same and you go today the you know water level have already gone down to almost about 80 to 100 meters. So, that it is going to be everywhere, the population explosion is all across the country throughout. People from villages want to come to the cities, city wants to expand, the builders, the politicians they just want to show something, there is no larger picture in their minds. So, immediate picture is make colonies, make buildings and all and that is where you are going to have problems. The latest problem in Delhi, I am sure, anybody from Dwarka here? The Dwarka, one of the best designed small city of Asia. If somebody is gone there, it is good. If somebody is not gone there, you must go and visit that place. The best design, when it was designed almost about 15 years back, 20 years back, it was told that it is going to be one of the best organized city after Chandigarh. Chandigarh has become a little bit clumsy, but Dwarka was supposed to be like that. And today, 100 percent people are surviving in those bottled waters. You do not find water, right. Your neighboring state, you go to Meerut, you go to Wagra, you, you know, Faridabad. Everywhere the same problems, the water levels have gone down so much 
and wherever the water is available at say 100 to 100 feet also it is uh, not portable water. It is basically the water which is trickled down from various factories. Uh, it can be any kind of factory they get permissions and whatever it is and it is all poisonous. Most of the places you will find water borne diseases people suffering as only because of this and if we do not take corrective actions right now this is what is going to happen in next about 10 years that we will be just you know rather than going in for gold we will be just running after water. So, this is you know what yesterday we had a water pollution today we have a water stress tomorrow we are going to have total scarcity and then what happens next? So, all of you will be ready with your guns killing people for water glass of water ok. I only hope it does not happen in near future not only during till the time we are alive, but till the time you or next generation or next generation some solution will come out. So, why do we treat water we have just gone through it just for somebody some points we missed out rapid growth in population limited water resources. Had anybody would have thought about you know that we will have to pay for water drinking water. People are coming out with lot of ideas railways uh, the engineers who are sitting with me in my previous company where I was working they have been given we were talking about that PPP kind of a thing. So, the company managed to get a order now they have been given a complete railway line of almost I do not know how many thousands, thousands of kilometers to establish more than almost 1200 or water supply points on all railway stations, 1200 railway stations and they have been told that you will not sell that water for more than 2 rupees per bottle. I do not know how they are going to work out I, I really cannot work out or understand those finances, but this is going to be the, the thing tomorrow. Infrastructures we really do not have untreated water uh, we have seen all your NCR is a very good example. There is uh, somebody to from Howrah uh, what is this place here Harput yeah anybody from Harput side and all huh? no there, there, there is river comes from uh, Uttarakhand side Nainital side and that river is called Kali Nadi. And has anybody been to uh, Jim Corbett or Nainital? Been? Ok. So, you are too busy thinking about Nainital rather than what is you are passing through that place. <laughs> that Kali Nadi is actually become Kali Nadi. If you go today, it is really Kali Nadi. So, this is the state of FA everywhere because we are not thinking about it in a really realistic or logical manner that wherever there is any kind of water is there there are various treatment systems which things can be treated and had somebody thought about it that, that same water could have been treated and given back to the farmers rather than making that whole nadi from wherever it is passing a very very highly toxic. this is also there how many people are from delhi okay how much you love yamuna or is there any yamuna here And can anybody tell me how much of money has been spent on cleaning of Yamuna or making 
that so called yamuna look like yamuna river any guess any idea in last 10 years ha huh? how much more than 2000 crores yes anybody 2400 crores anyone stakes badhao yaar <laughs> in last 10 years or 15 years rather it started off with sheila dikshit they had spent already 20000 crores on making that yamuna river look like a river and improving the sewage system of delhi 20000 crores now i am sure if somebody had been abroad particularly the european countries and all like france venice england london and you seen those rivers and what these people have done to those rivers they will really cry in shame what are we doing with so much of money why we are not able to do it unfortunately for us as everywhere you will find that uh, bureaucracy coming into play that it is one source or one subject that is water and it is dealt by so many people and we are all working in small compartments say like delhi jal board is working on something its infrastructure and other things being looked after by mcd or somebody else like the dda colonies are being taken over by the only dda so nobody can delhi jal board or mcd is don't even know what they are doing with their sewage and water supply similarly is with the cpwd and pwd and that's why the whole it becomes literally that for indians like khichdi everybody is responsible nobody is accountable so firstly we need to just understand that that to make this water resource not look like gold and water should be like a water itself then we need to just keep thinking and keep working out somebody i am sure all of you must be having lot of great ideas lot of people keep giving i am sure lot of magazines would be coming here being university here i have seen number of magazines by the name of water or any other for that matter and any other topic related to the water and all so they keep giving lot of solutions in your own home you know we we just don't bother about how much of water every day we keep throwing through our kitchen or you you working or your aya is working and when she is washing dishes and all so the tap is open all the time for almost 10 to 15 minutes continuously even then water is not being used so we need to be just looking at those kind of things and all and start working start thinking start giving suggestions at least on these kind of things that how do we preserve water not only in form of the drinking water but also the recycled water the recycled water is very important for us now i'll just give you the graphical representation of what is the kind of sewage generated in metropolitan class 1 class 2 cities you know you can and this is all given the it's a million liters per day the mlds and how much is being treated and i'll sh- show you that these are the figures basically same thing and figures will give you that what is happening around us how many of you have experience of seeing the working of stp great uh anybody who has seen a stp more than few mlds more than one mld it's a big uh, delhi jal board stp and all has somebody seen you seen 
okay which one Corley. What is the capacity? Nay dekha. Okay. Huh? In Agra, we work. We work in seventy-eight MLD fusion. Seventy-eight MLD. Okay. And this is based on what uh, technology? Any re you remember? UASP, SPU, and UASP DHS. Okay. And uh, did you see the uh, parameters and the treated water? What was it? How many of you have been to Hong Kong? Anyone? No? Okay. The most of these countries and some of the western countries, European countries particularly, they use recycled water, purify it and then use it as a drinking water. Why? Because like we talked about, the, enough water is there around them and that is the sea water. But the cost of treating that sea water is so much that recycled water, it is easier to treat that recycled water and make it as a portable water. So, this is what is happening around us. Though we are showing that on paper, on ground, we have so many treatment plants. But the quality of our treatment, like I said, there is no place where you can train your supervisors and operators, no way. You can only have in-house training, on-the-job training. If you have good engineers, they will be able to teach them, train them. But if you do not have good engineers, then it will be very difficult. The live example I will give you, anybody who gets a chance to see uh, the best treatment plant in Delhi NCR is the DLF 9 MLD plant in phase 5. I had conducted a lot of uh, visits of lot of politicians, lot of uh, those senior, senior most guys of Haryana and uh, Delhi administration. Uh, they were really surprised that this can happen in India. And even when foreigners came to visit that place, because there we had a uh, lot of tertiary treatment, hi, lot of tertiary treatment there. And that water without using ROs, the water was fit for almost consumption. If you, if you just put the RO, even today, even today, the plant is 9 MLD, it is feeding almost I think 5 uh, buildings for their uh, flushing systems, where the, their cisterns and all are using that. They are feeding the complete, the one of the best golf course in Asia is that Gurgaon golf course, that is being fed through that and balance of the water is being utilized for construction purpose. So, if we are really serious about it, then we can uh, in fact really use this resource or these techniques to extract maximum usable water. In fact, in this water stress, you know, I intentionally put CPCB and CGWB. CPCB is Central Pollution Control Board and CGWB is Central Ground Water Board. Okay. Now, what are they? What are they supposed to be doing? Pollution Control Board as the name suggests, what are they supposed to be doing? No building will be given permission to be constructed without the clearance of Pollution Control Board and what is that, what permission, what kind of permission they will give? That the builder or the uh, government will give it in writing that they will have their own STPs, they will have their own waste management system, also they will have uh, the other things like you know these 
generators they are using, electricity they are using, high tension cables they are using, there are lot of transformers and all. So, there is no pollution out of that, okay. But in actuals what happens? Koi hai kisi ka jaan pehchan wala CP collusion control board mein? No? That is the best nokri. They have lot of responsibility with zero accountability. They can today, if somebody wants, who is really serious about his own job, he can stop functioning of at least 90 percent of the five star hotels in Delhi. Because none of the hotel is actually adhering to the standard norms which they are supposed to be adhering to. Now it is mandatory for all the hotels also to adhere to those basics norms of not only the water management, but the waste water management and solid waste management, right. But none of them is doing it. And uh, some of you, you people are very lucky, are yeah? you next to Hayat? You must tomorrow surprise visit, Ranjana. You can organize their surprise visit, a cup of coffee or tea for them there. So, they can just go and visit how their plants are working. Yeah, you, you must go, you must go to the mall, just the mall is also next door to you, that is on the basement. I have operated that mall also, uh, that plant for some time, okay, and I had seen its functioning. So, what they were trying to do basically is all that is instead of treating it, this whole muck from the, all three, four buildings comes at seven, seven places and then when something happens, they straight away bypass, there is something called bypass line. So, they bypass everything and send it to the Delhi jail board, the main sewer line. They do not treat. And they do not even understand because to run those cooling towers and central air conditioning, they will have to have water for that also. So, which can be utilized from the this recycled water, but they bite from the outside then. So, this is the story of pollution control port. So, if somebody happens to be, this is also one of the very, very so point in our system. And same same thing goes with the central ground water board. You know, it is no bore well can be dug without the permission of central ground water board. As per the government notification in Delhi NCAR, no bores will be dug, but people are still doing it. They are all giving those fake permissions for all this. So, these kind of systems also will put a lot of burden on this water resource. Like what we are talking about the state of your uh, treatment plants. So, somebody had done some studies and they said that only 10 percent can be called as good and 36 percent can be called as satisfactory, rest all is you know either they are not working or they are just working for the namesake. Okay. Now, we were just looking at basically the water, its availability, its problems and what are the problems in the whole scenario where we are going to face rather these kind of problems to manage water. Anybody would like to add something or suggestions or uh, ask anything.
No? Shall. Yeah. What are the factors for their performance? Like is it lack of funding or lack of knowledge or both? Lack of will, I'll say. If you are running a business, I am sure um, funding should not be a problem. Similarly, if you have, uh, you know, made something, so you made something with a preview that tomorrow you have to maintain it also. So it is only, in my opinion, it is only the willpower of these guys that they do not want to really maintain it for these two things, not two things, well, it is only one thing rather. That is money part of it. So, you save that kind of money. You know, to run any STP or even the uh, water treatment plants, a lot of chemicals are being used. If you are not running it, so you are saving on those chemicals. Then, suppose if you have to run one plant and Unlike the water treatment plants, your sewage treatment plants run 24 by 7. So, you have to have people on all three shifts. So, if you are running a plant, then you will have to have three people sitting there. So, what people do generally? They just keep one guy. Anybody who is coming for inspection will come during the daytime or office hours, is not it? So, for that particular time, you just keep one person. And rest of the time, it's, you just put a lock there. And then most of the guys, like I told you, if you happen to go to this place, mall, so you will find that people are bypassing it. And of course, uh, the money becomes major factor. And that money, why, why money is becoming major factor is that sometimes, you, you know, these pollution control board people are also very, very dirty guys. Even if you are running a proper STP, you are as per the laid down procedure, you are having almost every day checked certain parameters, the weekly checking out those parameters, monthly checking out those parameters, but even then they would like to get something out of you. So, naturally something will come to your mind, if even if I have to pay this guy, then why should I work? Right? So, the load increases of the central system and as far as the pollution control board is concerned, these guys are concerned or the owner is concerned, it is a win-win situation for both the people. So, for them it is good, you know, even if it is not working, how does it make a difference? So, I can bypass the whole system, right? So, that, that may be the only reason why people are doing it like this. And of course, uh, as for the government organizations are concerned, like you said that when you go to Delhi Jail Board things and all, you will find all, you know, in government departments, the checks are very, very stringent checks, very stringent. You will find, you go to any office, you will find these kind of things, you know, very standard operating procedures, they, they are all hanging on the wall. The duties of each and every operator, supervisor, manager, engineer, technical guy, everything is hanging on the wall, right? But when it comes to executing it on ground and following it, you will find there is a problem. People do not follow it in a true Latin spirit. And that is where the problem comes that we and of course, uh, you know, I still remember when I was doing my degree and when it came to doing a post graduation. So, we were being offered uh, environmental engineering and uh, so let me say sorry to you all, the word I am going to use because and then myself and a few of our guys, you know, we said, humko nahi karna hai, kata, kyo nahi karna hai, kata, yaar, ye shit pot engineering hai, environmental engineering. So, that mindset of people is that if I, if I have to work in this kind of a thing, then theek hai, yaar, wo, agar, मेरे पास नौकरी नहीं है तो मैं करूंगा कोई काम प्रॉब्लम नहीं है बट अगर 
नौकरी फर्स्ट चांस मिलता है तो मैं हट भी जाऊंगा यहाँ से और मेरा फील ही यही है तो देन आई विल नॉट हाउ मीन इट इट्स लेट मी टेल यू दैट इट्स वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू इवन स्टैंड देयर फॉर वन आवर इन साइड दोज एस टी सो जस्ट कम टू थिंक अबाउट दोज गाइज हुआ वर्किंग देयर सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इफ द सुपरवाइजर्स एंड मैनेजर्स आर नॉट गुड then you will find problems with all the stps so one has to be very very stringent and very strict with your own people also yeah there is one more problem that people generally don't realize uh, even if the stps are working properly it is a problem uh, that where they are discharging that treated water like i visited this uh, this stp plant in indrapuram so they were discharging the absolutely absolutely what you are saying is absolutely right only thing what you have to just notice on this particular thing is you know whatever is muck is there in yamuna it is supposed to be all uh, treated water from the delhi jal board uh, stps that is where we are talking about those 20000 crores have gone into as only because that was initial concept and thinking was that we will have 100% treated water the 100% sewage will be treated and whatever discharge we are going to get the treated discharge it will be discharged into the river and you see the quality of discharge there so on ground you have there are almost i think uh, 20 or 30 or major treatment plants stps are there of djb all of them are working on ground i look at the quality of discharge which is being there in uh, yamuna so uh, the monitoring guys who are monitoring the uh, stp plants which are who are submitting those performance reports and all the somewhere around there something wrong in the whole system and in fact that's why I, i was talking to somebody in the morning itself and we were just discussing that 20000 crore if you are spending you could have made complete delhi and yamuna the stretch of delhi yamuna whatever it is about 25 30 kilometers as a lined one it would have been made as just exactly like a canal you could have had the best possible system here but somehow that like he said the will is not there that is number one and second of course unfortunately the corruption and lot of other things comes into play but we need to just focus what we are you know how much we can contribute that's more important okay a little bit of touching upon uh, technology i am not going to get into any kind of technical aspects if somebody wants to know and wants to have anything so there are lot of uh, information available including the design part of it and now we have uh, in fact i have a designer with me here i have uh, the operation engineer and we have a project manager also here who is again a technical guy who can give you all kind of insight into uh, everything so just suffice to say there are enough number of type of technologies for treating waste water in india and all of them are available we have more than 15000 players in this country who are working in this field right from a small uh, company to a very large company they are working in this particular field providing stps providing operation maintenances of those stps and all and they are using various kind of techniques here so we'll just it will be a little bit more i'll just give you the particularly why i want you all to just go through it when we are discussing the most important the first part of it is the whether you want to have a centralized system or you want to have a decentralized system seeing the utility of each and every technology which is best suited for you then we can 
just discuss that also. So, everywhere you know that is not getting into the too much of technical details, you have a raw sewage coming, you have seen that, then you have a pumping station, then you have screening, then you have aeration chamber, then secondary chambers, so some dosing and all and if somewhere you will find the filters later on. So, ACF, MGF and all what they call so, okay, multi gate filters or uh, activated carbon filters and all and lot of people are using when the quality of water required is a very high quality particularly when you are using central AC systems and all. There is something called neutralization system that, that also will come into play. So, you will have to use that also. Same the basic concept in all is same, but the only is the treatment part of it, they, uh, the core that will only vary. So, you have a MBBR, then you have a FAB, again MBBR and FAB almost same thing, do you have a SBR and you have MBR. USP somebody was talking about it and then you have trickling filters and all. Right. So, just from understanding point of view when we were talking about you know urban sanitation, urban treatment, how do you sanitize your um, colonies, say for example, your Delhi itself. Okay. So, Delhi is made up of how many villages? Almost I think 300 plus villages and those core of those villages still exist in Delhi and those villages still like villages only. It is only around those villages, those high fly guys come and made those multi story buildings and bungalows and all, but inside the those bungalow area you will find those villages still and that is where the problem comes. So, we do not have any kind of localized sanitation system in those areas and that is where you need to just look into these kind of things and think about it. Uh, if you are making a project that how we have a water treatment systems, how we have the uh, sewage treatment system and how we can dispose of the solid waste of that particular area in that area itself. And you need to then think about then what are the advantages, disadvantages of having a self sufficient colony even in sanitation part of it. Okay, or you need to depend upon somebody else. I am sure uh, when you go to any place, even I see next to my place from here only, like I stay in Munirka Vihar. So, there used to be a small Jugi Jhopri types, now they have become a proper Jugi Jhopri. Multi story buildings have come up now in that area. Now, Munirka village, if you go inside, those multi story buildings have come up. And the organized colonies around that, they are the ones who are suffering now. The moment you think about having that kind of a sanitation in that localized colony, it is much better way of doing it rather than you know pumping everything into the cent central sewage system. And if you pump it in the main line, so we have seen it that what happens in the during the monsoon season, the whole Delhi comes to standstill. And it is this problem is there with every metropolitan. Like Mumbai has this has happened, Calcutta it has happened, and Delhi, of course, we've been seeing it for a number of years, and same thing happens in down south also. Okay. Now, if we see this, I wonder, yeah, can you we will see it from behind? Thoda thoda. Okay.
Now, what we are talking about this for uh, information of you all. The one of the most important part is uh, the say space requirement, then ease of construction, the life cycle cost, capex and opex that is your capital and operational cost, your uh, turn down ratio. So, pre treatment requirements, process monitoring, water quality issues, nutrient removal, odor ventilation issues, sludge generation, operation and maintenance. Okay. So, what I would like you all to just ok, let us just concentrate only on these 4 parameters. Ok, ok. Right. If you see in this, these are the four major parameters to be kept in mind while selecting your uh, what kind of technology you should adopt. And if you see in this, then we will the something your sequential batch reactor that is SBR comes into your mind and that is the technology which is being used by almost everyone any all top class the best results and the least your even operation costs. Then I will not get into all this. Anybody wants to know about the cost and all? Somebody is interested? Koi designer hai? Ruk jana fir. Haan, yeah. Yeah. For questions. We will give you that the standard formula for that. Okay. So, you do not have to just memorize or calculate anything. So, you just note 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, 1 MLD, 2 MLD, 3 MLD. What is the standard? Somebody asks you, yaar, iski cost kya hogi? So, you can straight away say, ki, okay, this is the cost, rough plus minus. Okay. So, we will, I will give you those figures. Yeah, then we will just skip that. Somebody wants to uh, have it, I will leave this presentation behind. The treated water is used for what all purpose? Your horticulture, your flushing, your gardening, cooling towers, even car washing and all. If you can have uh, slightly better uh, treatment system at the end, the tertiary treatment, then it can be used for your even car washing and all also. We will just skip on this, the selection of technology. The way forward we are talking about recycle, reuse, techno economically viable technologies, you have to select one of them, operation maintenance and their training part of it, reduction in operational cost by innovations. These days you can have the totally we had few plants and I happen to work in uh, some of them, totally remote controlled plants. You can sit in your office and operate these plants. Now we have the technology also available with SPR technology because it is it somehow works with this complete. Then promotion of PPP models then of course, PPP model I am sure you must be knowing it if we can discuss if somebody wants that. Urban versus rural I really do not want to get into it, but only thing I can tell you is this just remember this that if you are asked in whether it is the urban area or it is the rural area to go in for the complete ecosystem, then you have to handle 
your drinking water you have to handle your waste water and you have to handle your solid waste and if you can integrate all three of them so you will have 100% portable water then you will have 100% almost like these days even the policy is there in some places particularly those hospitals and all zero discharge policy no discharge so whatever the liquid waste is there it is recycled water the water can be recycled whatever the solid waste comes out it is used as compost okay there are certain chemicals which are used in that and the whole thing is converted into compost also so as a manure you can use it and people are still using it now at the certain places yes wherever they have uh, very good oper uh, operational plants and all so you will find everything being covered in that then of course like i told you the we have systems it is available in market the technology is available in market you can have remotely controlled systems also or totally uh, you, you can have just one person monitoring the complete operations only one person okay so that is also available in market today so we need to just have or think about it and we have um, you know we have to apply ourselves and whenever we are uh, telling people that this is all available in the market so we need to make a proper project or whenever you are making a report and try and make it complete in all sense then somebody uh, like uh, asked about the cost then something is there as a population something somebody is having a project that this is the population for this size of population how much of what is the size of the plant is going to be there so you can start working on that also so somebody wants can note it down also and large versus small i was talking about the area requirement that is one mechanical paths huge maintenance power requirement is again huge when it goes to larger ones cost manpower administrative requirements and administrative requirements will include your not only the manpower part of it and the services part of it but also the chemicals handling of chemicals who is going to handle so much of chemicals for larger if you have a smaller one you can just keep it in one corner so very small quantity of chemicals will be required but when you have a larger plants then huge quantity of chemicals will be required so that advantage versus disadvantage of both plus when you having a small and a bigger plants when you have a bigger centralized system so you will have the kilometers of pipeline laid for through which the sewage is coming to the plant you just come to think of the cost of that and not only of laying cost of that particular those pipelines and all but maintaining it subsequently so that also needs to be considered when we are saying that smaller plants are much more easier to handle and much uh, they are more efficient to have or to maintain a proper sanitation in the area and of course like i i tell you the biogas and all i i haven't covered in that i think solid waste management somewhere it should be there solid waste management vermi composting that is one the rotary dump composting that's very smaller in you know things can be done and people are doing it actually if you go to the villages vermi composting is a very common thing if you are using the urea from the market just see the disadvantage of that you are making the complete soil toxic but here it is a natural manure non toxic so this also you can utilize even for the urban areas this vermi composting and biogas technology it's very simple not too much of Uh, complications in this we can still like you know there are places there are good hotels we are maintaining who are maintaining all this uh, they are utilizing the gas which are coming out of this for running their kitchens maybe in a smaller quantity but yes you can smaller society smaller colony smaller jugi jhopri you can utilize the whole thing for running your banias canteen chaps you know they can utilize this gas for their cooking and all that is very small nothing swachh bharat mission well just i don't think i have a more 
information than you all have. You have I think more information than me. Safe drinking water, they have a complete sewage treatment every way and the sanitation that is solid waste management. So, you have household toilets, community toilets, public toilets, solid waste management. These are the four most important ingredients objective which is the white paper issued by the government of India. Okay, so, you need to just work on this I and mean, when you say the toilet part of it just keep in your mind the treatment. Okay, so when you are having too many toilets say in a village or in a society where the excreta or the disposal is there. Is it being connected to a central, are you having central sewer system? If yes, then is it connected to that? If not, then what is happening to that? Okay. And like an army, what we whenever we go for say 3 months to 6 months training, so there is something called DTL, deep trench latrines, they are all dry. We just go there, camp there for 3 months, do our training, fill it up, come back, nobody even knows and this is all, it becomes all manure. So, are people using that way? No. Open defecation is a common thing in as far as in India is concerned, in villages are concerned or even in metros are concerned. So, that, that needs to be thought of. Even if you want to have a say dry latrines and all, dry toilets, it is available. It is even available in India today. DRDO, the defense research organization, they have already made and given it to the uh, railways. Okay. So, that can also be worked on. Bhai number 1, Kone Madhavi, tell me something, Bhai number 1, huh? good. Anyone, girls, what is this Bhai number 1? Tum logo ne pada nahi hai, mereko doubt ho gaya tha yaar. I thought you guys must have really seen something called Swachh Bharat Mission. You must read it. And what is Operation Mal Yud? What is Mal? Hmm? Excreta, human waste. Mal Yud Kusti Wala Nahi. Okay, now you, you must remember this, and for you guys. For boys, the government has this is part of the Swachh Bharat mission. Bhai number one is right now it is going on in Madhya Pradesh. I think it is the it is a major flagship program for the chief minister and even the central government has done that. Every brother was supposed to give toilet to his sister during Raksha Bandhan they were talking about it and government is supposed to give him loan and some, some part of money to him. Okay? And those brothers who are supposed to be doing it, so they will get the certificate of bhai number one. <laughs> okay, so this is part of the government policy. If you somebody can educate these guys who are in villages and all, people can still. There are about 26 lakh applications pending with the government of India right now. Okay, so people are aware of it and people are doing it. And similar is Operation Maluyut. It is particularly uh, in. Metros, I have not seen anybody doing it, but uh, I have seen one report again from MP only. So, the anyone who is defecating or you know he is standing on the sides of the road or in open areas, so there will be gangs who will be whistling. Okay, so, do not defecate in open area, do not dirty the open place. So, that is where they have given it name of Operation Malyud. So, bhai number one is I have finished.